Hello, this is Vaughn Clement, and this is the tour of the new version of Equipment Management. A lot of new features in this new app, 2.0. What I want to do is cover some of the main screens. These are called parent screens. <clears throat> in the last version, we did not have an inventory, vendor, or client screen, or an equipment log. These are all new this, this uh, version. Uh, we, did we did also have a product orders. So this, screen, uh, this app has expanded itself by quite a bit as far as technical capability. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about the, uh, what we call a portal. A portal is a scrolling list, and in this particular case, this is the equipment selection portal for the asset screen. And basically what it does is it lists all the items as you add them on the asset screen, and you can pick them from here. This is like a list view. Clicking the icon in the end of the row will take you to that particular screen. You can also use the icons over here and what we're going to do is we're going to start out by talking a little bit about the icons here. The asset screen is where you actually add each individual end item and then describe the assemblies, sub-assemblies and components and then set up a scheduled service plan. The next item is the inventory where you have all the parts and materials that you might be using in service both unscheduled and scheduled where you'll be adding those materials so you can use them in the service work order. You add a vendor because the vendors are needed in order to purchase items of a vendor's list. If you are in a kind of an environment where you actually do work for a client, we've set up the service work order so you can go ahead and add clients and bill clients. There is the products order where you take the inventory items and order from a vendor and this would be the purchase order area. Then there's the service order, which is where you do scheduled and unscheduled service. And then the last item is a new item that we just dreamed up this year. It's called Equipment Log. And what Equipment Log does is it allows you to manage leases and rentals of equipment if you have that kind of a business. This is a new uh, addition this year. On this screen, you'll also find these main parent screens. There's also the subscreens which are called child screens. And these are the buttons that take you to all the child screens. Let's go ahead and go into the asset screen and I'll explain how that works. What we're gonna do is uh, go to the first record. The uh, asset screen is where you put the end item in and describe everything about the end item, including specifications and special notes. At the bottom of the screen, there is a UDF field where you can add the title field in and an input field. So these are white areas are all five, there's five input titles and then five input uh, fields where you can add something that I have not added as far as a field definition. This is, uh, allows you to have an infinite number of additional records under the asset screen. Uh, down on the bottom you'll see that there's buttons to the main screens. At the top we have a tabbed interface where we have the asset screen that we're in now and I'm going to start going through these. The assembly screen is the top level under the end item and assemblies are items that usually have a serial number on them and they're identified by the serial number as an asset below the end item. Each time you have a record in here you're adding one assembly on each line through this portal so you can set up how this end item is actually uh, put together as far as assemblies. There's a serviceability, for example, if it's serviceable, repairable, if it's a core and you have to return it or salvage it, or it's not serviceable, not repairable, no return and no salvage. There's also a portal that you can go to that expands on the text area so you can go ahead and make entries over there. There's a notes field for all the assets assemblies that are in here. Now each one of the items below here, for example, sub-assemblies and components, look just like this screen so you don't have to learn a lot of extra stuff. What you're building is a three-tier assembly, sub-assembly, and components based on the uh, end item asset in this record. So you have the asset that's the end item and then it's assembly, sub-assemblies, and components. What you would do in the service schedule is to take those items, assemblies, sub-assemblies, and components, and add them to a record in this portal where you can add as many as you want and you can put the service uh, description and required materials in order to do the service on this particular asset. In this case, it's a uh, we picked a uh, assembly in this line, 
a subassembly in this line, and a component in this line. Now, subassemblies are usually attached to maybe a, an end item and or to a, an assembly, and they break down underneath of it. For example, an assembly might have subassemblies in it, or the subassemblies can be uh, items that are attached to the end item but act as subordinate items. Then you have components, which are things like braces and nuts and bolts and uh, hoses and all those kind of things that you may have to do service on and fluids and fluid containers where you're actually doing some component service in the uh, function of doing scheduled maintenance. And this is the scheduled maintenance service. Let's go back to the main asset screen. Now we're going to go over to the inventory. In the inventory screen, the first thing you'll note is you put in an item and list it. One item per screen. There's a area over here that shows you how you can jump between different uh, records for different items in the uh, inventory system. This particular portal down here will uh, take all the materials that are used to date and as you add or take a item and use it in a service work order, it's going to list them here and under what work order were they used and the quantities that were used. It's going to summarize the quantity used and the dollar value of the items that are used. Down here on the bottom, this is for materials purchased coming the opposite direction. Four of them were ordered, cost, quantity, and what order ID were they ordered on and the initial cost. Going from this screen, if I take the main menu button and go back, I'm going to go to the vendor screen. Very simple screen, basically the information at the top of the screen for the vendor and the vital statistics. And you'll notice that MapQuest is in here. And what MapQuest does is give you the location of that particular organization on the maps. Going back to the main menu, same thing with the clients. You'll notice that the clients works and looks just like the vendors, so it's simple to use and easy to find uh, things under MapQuest. Next thing is the product purchase. Under the product purchases, you do a purchase order. There's a print version of the uh, purchase order and a select portal where you can see the individual purchase orders that were made and what comp uh, company was the vendor for the item and the date they were ordered. You can jump around through the records in the select portal so you can go find them. There are, in the companion app, there are list uh, menus that I'm not showing you that were in the child records that will show you lists of these items and some of those actually are like reports where they summarize different information. And within this area there's also a portal screen that will give you detail and more space to see additional information about the, the uh, purchase order. If you want to print the purchase order there's a, a standalone print purchase order where you can either print it or take a snapshot from the iPad. <clears throat> the service order is a very interesting uh, design that we did. Once again, we have a select portal to go through and pick whatever uh, per service order that we want to. They're all listed individually. As you add them, you can add as many as you want. And the way this works, you break down the end item first, and you'll notice that they're listed by the end item ID. If, this, if there are many end item IDs, or in the secondary, for example, uh, another item where there's assemblies, they will all be listed with their primary number on them. So this is asset number one where you have all the way down to the component level and also the assembly drop-down and the sub-assembly drop-down. And you can see over here what you're really picking from. Now the key to this is that some end items have an assembly where they may be serviced at the assembly level, yet it may go down further to a sub-assembly or maybe all the way down to a component when you're working on this service item. There's an area to put the service description and the service performed after you actually do the service, you list it plus the materials that you used. And in addition, there is a uh, materials listing down here of the actual items you used. We're going to jump over to another portal. And you can see that these are the materials in the material screen. And this is a typical portal for those. And there's a key one here. For example, under here, you're going to have labor, which is listed here. Materials come up over here as a summary. If you want to put in labor hours, there's a portal in this particular uh, area where you can put the individual hours and you can put as many hours of many people in there as you want to based on the service on this item. The last area we're going to, let's go over to the uh, new equipment log. What the equipment log does is it basically takes 
and a client. If you want to drop down and pick a client, you can put them in. If you're doing service in an inside organization, you can put the department and information about the department where you're actually doing work. Uh, the equipment log has the standard information for address and so forth if you, you're going to a client, and the billing summary can be at the top. The information down here is uh, quite co uh, complete in that you have a checkout time, a return date, return time, hour cost, hours used, the sum of the hours. If you have an operator that was issued with the uh, vehicle and ticket to a location, you also have a delivery cost and the hours the operator was actually in there and at their labor rate. And then you have fuel used and fuel cost and fuel sum and other costs for things that are over and above. And you could put as many records in here as you want and print those. And they're summarized by the summary totals at the bottom. And you also have a comment area down here. So you have a very simplistic, easy to read uh, equipment log that you can use with your customers. In a lot of these areas, uh, the forms, there are actually hidden buttons in the largest bold area for the title of the page. For example, if I click this one, it takes me back to the main menu. There's a, a support button here if you have more questions. I suggest what you do is go to the uh, support center and get a copy of the user guide to read more about this application. Thank you for taking this tour.